He was jobless and struggling with money. But he chased knowledge, determined to change his life. Through hard work, he built a data center and found success. Then, someone set him up. He was dragged into interrogation and prison. He was dragged into legal troubles. After his release, he disappeared to a distant city, behind an unknown face. Imagine a mannequin-like, faceless character coming to life in your film. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a character like that to create cinematic b-roll shots for your animated documentary content, just like the videos you see on channels such as Fern. Hi everyone, my name is Iman. This is the Iman Global YouTube channel. Welcome back to a new tutorial. Please support my YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get started. I've prepared a template that makes the entire process super simple for you. You can copy it from the description of this video. First, open ChatGPT. Paste the template into the message box and hit submit. Once you do that, ChatGPT will give you two options. It'll ask whether you want to upload an image or describe your own idea. In this example, we'll go with the first option, uploading an image. I'm using a photo of a man in a park. I send the image, and ChatGPT generates one main scene prompt and five additional B-roll prompts for creating a faceless mannequin-like human figure. As the template runs, ChatGPT asks which B-roll prompt you'd like to generate. Pick one you like, for instance, I'll choose number one. Then it asks about the image aspect ratio, vertical, horizontal, or square. For this example, I'll go with horizontal for YouTube. Now, based on the information we just gave, ChatGPT transforms the man from our uploaded image into a faceless mannequin-like human figure, essentially performing an image-to-image -image transformation. The image generated by ChatGPT is perfect for animated documentary-style content. But maybe you'd like to recreate the same style using other AI art generators. No problem. Our template has already done the heavy lifting by generating a variety of detailed prompts through ChatGPT. I'll copy one of them and move over to the image generator Paclumen. There's a full Paclumen tutorial on my channel. Make sure to check it out. I paste the prompt, set the model to Paclumen Art V1, aspect ratio to 16 to 9, and output images to 2, then click generate. After a few moments, the images in the style of a faceless mannequin-like human figure are ready inside Paclumen. Now let's move to Leonardo AI. I paste the same prompt into the text box, Set the model to Phoenix 1. Turn prompt and hands off. Set style to cinematic, image dimensions to 16 to 9, and output images to 2. I hit generate, and after a few moments, the images in the style of a faceless mannequin-like human figure are ready in Leonardo. You can copy and paste the rest of the B-roll prompts to capture your story from different camera angles. This way, you can build a full visual narrative using multiple shots. Now let's move to the second scenario. This time, we'll start with a written idea instead of an image. I open ChatGPT again and paste the template one more time. This time, I select option 2, describe a scene in text, and I type in my initial idea. ChatGPT then uses the template and my concept to create one main scene prompt and five bureau prompts for generating a faceless mannequin-like human figure. It asks again which B-roll prompt I want. I'll choose number one. Then it asks about the image aspect ratio. Once again, I'll go with horizontal for you two. Now, based on our idea, ChatGPT generates an image of a prisoner, transformed into a faceless mannequin-like human figure, according to the camera angle and setup we specified. One key thing to note here is that if you use ChatGPT alone, it will generate consistent character images even across different locations. As you saw in the template, multiple prompts were created for various camera perspectives. I'll copy one of them, head back to Paclumen, paste it into the text box, keep the same settings, and click Generate. After a few moments, images of the prisoner based on my concept, in the style of a faceless mannequin-like human figure, are ready in Paclumen. Let's check it in Leonardo AI as well. I paste the same prompt, keep the same settings, click Generate. And after a few moments, the images of the prisoner, again in the style of a faceless mannequin-like human figure, are ready in Leonardo. 
It's time to bring these images to life. Using two video generation AIs, Kling and Pixverse, I'll show you exactly how to animate them. Let's start with Pixverse. I upload one of the images we created earlier in the faceless mannequin-like human figure style. This one shows a man in a server room. I set the video model to V5, set the duration to 5 seconds, and increase the resolution to 540p. From the camera motion presets, I choose zoom out. Then I type a short prompt describing how I want the scene to move and hit generate. After a short wait, the video is ready, the still image is now animated, and the character is moving. It honestly feels like magic. Plus, using the tools in the bottom right corner, we can upscale the video right inside the same AI to boost its quality even more. I upload another image. This one shows a prisoner inside an interrogation room. From the camera motion presets, I select right arc shot. Then I type out my animation idea in the text prompt box, hit generate. And after a short moment, the video is ready. Our still image has come to life. The camera slowly circles around the character. And the lighting combined with the drifting smoke in the room makes the whole scene look incredibly cinematic. Now let's move to the video AI cling to animate our images there as well. I upload another one of the images we created earlier in the faceless mannequin-like human figure style. This one features a man in a park. I write out my animation idea in the prompt box. Since I don't need sound effects, I disable that option. Then I click generate, and after a short wait, the video is ready. Our still image is now moving, and the character walks toward the camera. Next, I upload another image, this time of a person inside a courtroom. Again I type my animation idea into the text prompt box, click generate, and after a few moments, the video is ready. The still image comes alive, the character walks toward the camera as it slowly pulls back, while chaos and explosions unfold in the background. For the documentary voiceover, you can use 11 labs. From the left menu, click on text to speech, paste your script into the text box. In the voice section, choose your narrator's voice, male or female, in any accent you prefer. Then, click Generate Speech to convert your text into voice, and finally download the audio file in MP3 or WAV format. Now we move into the critical stage, Final Editing. This is where we combine all the footage and voiceovers to create one complete film and a cohesive animated story. You can use free tools like CapCut or Canva for this. But I personally always edit my projects in Adobe Premiere Pro, and I highly recommend learning it. It gives you much more control and professional flexibility. In Adobe Premiere Pro, I start by creating a new project. I give it a name, choose a save location, and click Create. Next, from the File menu, I create a new sequence. From the presets, I select 1080 and set my sequence dimensions. I name the sequence and hit OK. Just like that, our sequence is ready. In the project panel, I right-click, choose import, and browse for the animation files. I select them and add them to the project. Then I select all the files and drag and drop them onto the folder icon to organize them into a single folder, which I rename to footage. I right-click in the project panel, choose import, browse for the voice files, and add them to the project. Once they're imported, I place them in a new folder named Voice. I then drag and drop all the videos into the timeline. A clip mismatch warning appears. I choose Keep Existing Settings so the sequence settings don't change. I zoom in on the timeline so I can clearly see all the clips in the program monitor. Then I select all the video layers, right-click on one of them, and choose Scale to Frame Size so they all match the sequence dimensions. Some of the clips have empty audio tracks. I right-click on those, select Unlink to separate the audio from the video, and delete the empty audio layers. Now, based on the story, I arrange the short clips one after another in the timeline to form a complete, cohesive video. To adjust the scale or position of the videos, I go to the Effects Control Panel. Under the Motion section, I use Scale and Position to fine-tune the size and framing so everything fits perfectly.
Now I drag the voiceover file into the audio track. With the razor tool, I trim the extra parts and cut the audio into segments, placing them in the right spots according to the narration timing. Using the move tool, I shift the audio clips to sync them precisely with the visuals. You can do the same to add background music and sound effects to your timeline for a richer sound design. Once everything is perfectly aligned, it's time to export. I click the export button, name the final file, and choose a save location on my hard drive. Under format, I select H264. For the preset, I set it to full HD. Finally, I hit export, and after a few minutes, our full-length animated video is complete. If you're also interested in editing films with Adobe Premiere Pro, let me know in the comments. If enough people ask, I'll definitely make more tutorials on it. You'll find the template, all the links, and every tool I used in this video down in the description. In the next tutorial, I've got some surprises that will seriously blow your mind. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming lessons. AI is the future. Start embracing it today.